Hello, and welcome to this lesson on system of equation word problems. So we're going to solve systems of equations, but these will be mostly in a word problem format, a kind of a real life scenario. Uh, the central question says, how do I use linear systems to solve real world problems? And there is no new vocabulary, so let's get to it. So it says, Sean is having a party and asks his friends to bring food. Hermes brought two pizzas and 12 wings from Panucci's Pizza. Amy bought one pizza and 18 wings from Panucci's Pizza. Hermes paid $21 and Amy paid $16.50. How much does each pizza and wing cost? Okay, so this is a, a fairly typical system of equation question. Um, we know it's system of equations because there's actually two things we need to find. We need two variables. We need the cost of each pizza and the cost of each wing. So that would be our x and our y variable. So the first thing that we should usually do whenever we're doing a word problem is define our variables. Like let's set it out from the very beginning so everybody understands what we're using as x and y. So x is going to be the cost of a pizza. And y is going to be the cost of a wing. So now when I'm using x and y in my equations, we understand which variable goes to which thing in the word problem. You could just as easily use p's and w's for pizza and wings as x's and y's. Um, I, I personally am a fan of using x's and y's. You will see there are some problems, um, specifically if you're getting from textbook or something like that, where they might have other variables other than x and y. Okay. So now reading through the problem again, so uh, Sean's having a party as his friends to bring food. Hermes bought two pizzas and 12 wings. And Amy bought one pizza and 18 wings. Hermes paid $21. So he bought two pizzas. So two times by the number of pizzas or the cost of the pizza plus 12 wings. Two pizzas plus 12 wings. Now, this is a cost two times by the cost of a pizza. This is an amount of money. So money for pizza plus money for wings equals his total money. Hermes paid a total of $21. So that equation is Hermes. That's how much he paid for his pizza and wings from Panucci's Pizza. Amy's equation would be very similar. It says Amy bought one pizza, so one pizza and 18 wings, and that cost her $16.50. Now, all we need to do in order to figure out how much does each pizza and wing cost is solve this system of equations. So we don't even need the word problems anymore. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to slide it over here a little bit. And I'm going to do one or two more quick things. I'm going to shrink this down, just give myself a little bit more space to avoid having to get a whole other page in here. So looking at this, here's my system of equations. If I could make one of my variables cancel out, eliminate, we could solve the equation. So we can use that either uh, the elimination method or the substitution method. So any of the methods we've learned so far, you could even go through and you could solve both of these equations for y, graph them using your graphing calculator, use that trace, or the calculate the intersection feature to find the intersection point that way. Now, I'm going to do this by hand, but you can also use any of these other methods. To do this by hand, I would take the bottom equation and I would multiply by negative 2. That multiplying by negative 2 is going to make my x's cancel. Because I have a positive 2x here, this will become a negative 2x there. My x's will eliminate, and I'll be able to go. So here we go. Top equation stays the same. 2x plus 12y equals 21. Bottom equation multiplied by negative 2 is a negative 2x minus 36y equals... 16.5 times by negative 2 is a negative 33. Now, when I add these equations together, because that's what you do with your systems of equations, your x's will eliminate. I have 
negative 24y. Pretty sure that's right. Yep. Equals, let's see, um, 21 minus 33. 21 minus 33 is negative 12. And divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. Y, oops, not 2, 24. I'm dividing by 24 to cancel out this 24. And y equals a positive 0 0.5. Come on, there it is. Now, that is money. So I can even make it look a little bit more like money. I can make it 0 0.5, 0. So my solution, I know the y variable is 0 0.50, money. That would be 50 cents. So the cost of each wing is 50 cents. We figured that out. We know each wing costs 50 cents to buy. The only thing we don't know right now is the cost of a pizza. But once we plug in our wing price into one of these equations, we can then figure out the cost of the pizza. So let's do that. So I'm going to take uh, this top equation, 2x plus 12 times by 50 cents equals 21. That gives me 2x plus 6 equals 21. I subtract 6 on both sides. 2x equals 15. Pretty sure. 21 minus 6. Okay. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals 7.5. In terms of money, that would be $7.50. So we now have that each pizza costs $7.50, each wing costs $0.50, and there we have it. That is solving this system of equations from a word problem. We started by defining our variables, setting out what x and y is, writing our equations, which honestly, this is the hard part of the whole problem, is writing your system of equations, solving, solving, solving. Let it be. It says the admission fee at a small fair is $1.50 for children. So $1.50 for children and $4 for adults. On a certain day, 2,200 people entered the fair and they made that much money. How many children and how many adults entered? So when you're defining your variables, so let x equal and y equal, don't just say x is children. This is not a very good labeling, and why? Because what about the children? Is it how many children? Is it the cost of the children? The height of the children? Like, this is not very explicit. We would like to know how many. So the number of children and the number of adults. So now we have, ooh, now we have our variables defined, okay? And now we can set up our equations. So it says here, it's $1.50 for a child. So the number of children, however many children entered, times by, was it $1.50? Yeah. So $1.50 times by the children, plus $4.00 for each adult. Now, I don't necessarily have um, a whole equation here. I'm just kind of helping you see what it would look like. So it's $1.50 for each child plus $4 for each adult. Okay, things we know. We know that on a certain day, 2,200 people entered the fair. That would be total people. So we know like all the children plus all of the adults enter the fair and there is 2,200 of them. And we know that all of those people, they made 1,000 or $5,050. Now we don't know how many kids and how many adults there are, but we know that this kind of combination, however many kids 
times by $1.50 and however many adults times by $4, they made 5050 bucks. This whole equation here is talking about money. This is $1.50 times by a kid. That's going to be a money. So if it's $1.50 times by three kids, they made $4.50. This is a money. Plus, this is a money. This is $4 times by each adult. If there was two adults, that'd be eight bucks. So money plus money equals money. My second equation is all about people. Kids plus adults equals total people. People plus people equals people. Okay. It's sometimes very good to even explicitly tell yourself what are your variables? What are, th what things are being measured? I have a people number and I have a money number. So I have a people equation and I have a money equation. Now, again, that is the hardest part of system of equations is setting this up. Now that this is set up, hopefully between what we've learned over the past few lessons, you can solve this. So I'm going to solve this. Um, I'm going to solve this one using substitution. It's not my preferred method, but I haven't solved the problem using substitution in a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom equation here and I'm going to solve for y. And then I'm going to substitute it back into this top equation. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides. y equals negative x plus 2200. Because some people really like substitution. So now I can substitute this in for y. y is negative x plus 2200. So I'm going to plug in negative x plus 2200 in for this y. Um, I'm going to do it off to the side because I have space. So 1.5x plus 4 times negative x plus 2200 equals 5050. It's a fairly ugly equation. I mean, it's fairly long. I have to distribute and combine stuff. But overall, it's just a normal equation. So it's not too bad. So 1.5x plus Ooh, not plus. It's going to be a negative. Negative 4x. That's a plus. Um, 8800 equals 5050. So I distributed. 4 times by negative x. 4 times by 2200. I'm going to combine like terms. That's going to give me a hmm, negative 2.5. I'm pretty sure. 1.5 minus 4 plus 8,800. I can subtract, ooh, 8,800 on both sides. 2.5x equals 5050 minus 8,800 equals negative 3,750. Divide by negative 2.5, divide by negative 2.5, and x equals 2.5 is 1,500. So what does that mean? I, I just I found x. What does x mean in terms of the problem and the, and the the children and adults going to this thing? Well, x was the number of children. So I just found out that 1,500 children attended this small fair. That's my x value. x is 1,500. Now, now that I know how many children attended, I can figure out how many adults attended, I mean, even using this simple equation, because children plus adults is total people. If there is 1,500 children, I can do a little simple math. I'm just, I'm just going to subtract um, the 1,500 on both sides. I'm going to get 700. 1,500 plus 700 equals 2,200. If you wanted to see that, x plus y equals 2,200. 1,500 plus y equals 2200 minus 1500 on both sides and y is 700 so 700 adults attended 
Okay, I'm not terribly concerned with your solving. Now, you should be able to do this using substitution, elimination, graphing, graphing calculator, some method. You should be able to get the, to the solution. Okay, um, the part that you need to practice here is setting up your system of equations. So that's what I want you to do here in letter C. I want you to pause the video and I want you to set up your system of equations first. Stop after you have your equations made and then hit play and we'll go through it together until you have the equations made and then you can continue and pause the video and, and solve some more on your own, okay? So pause the video, set up the system of equations and then hit play. All right, so let x equal and y equal. It says here, the landscape company placed two orders with a nursery. The first order was for 13 bushes and four trees. I'm going to guess my variables are bushes and trees, something about them, and totaled $487. The second order was for six bushes and two trees. The bills do not list the per item price. What would be the cost of 10 bushes and three trees? So we don't know the cost of a bush and the cost of a tree. So that's what we need to figure out in this problem. So there's my variables defined. Setting up my system of equations. Um, actually, both of these equations are going to be about money because all the things they give us are money, money, money. So like it was 13 bushes and four trees was $487. That's a total amount of money. This is from the first order. 13 bushes plus four trees was $487. 13 bushes and four trees was $487. My second equation comes from the second order. The second order was six bushes plus two trees was $232. Now, the question they're asking us to find is, what would be the cost of 10 bushes and three trees? So right now, you can check to see if your equations match my equations. If they do, awesome. I would like you to, again, pause the video and now solve the rest of this problem. Feel free to make a new page if you need to using the plus add a new or the, this guy. And then click here and then add a page because it, it, it's going to take a little bit of work. Ooh, he put in the wrong place. There we go. So add a new page if you need to, to show your work. Um, but go ahead and try to solve this equation, the system of equations right now. All right, so I'm going to solve using the elimination method because that's what I like, and this one's not terribly hard to do. I'm looking at it and I'm going to make my y's eliminate. I know if I multiply this bottom equation by negative 2, this will become a negative 4 and my y's will cancel. So I'm going to make this a negative 4. That's my goal here. So if I multiply my bottom equation times by negative 2, I'm going to get negative 12x minus 4y equals negative 464. Up top, I don't need to do a darn thing. 13x plus 4y equals 487. I'm going to add my equations together, and that makes my y's eliminate. So now I have 1x equals whatever this is. 487 minus 464 is 23. So whatever x is, it's 23. Because I don't, I don't need to divide by one. It's just x is twenty three. So twenty three is the cost of a bush. So one bush cost twenty three bucks. My y variable is the cost of a tree. I can now figure that out because I've found x. So I can plug this x into any of my equations with x and y. Um, I'm actually probably going to use this one. It has the smallest numbers. I'll change color here. So let's see. 6 times by 23 plus 2 times y equals 232 bucks. And then I'll move him down. 
That way I'm not splitting over two different pages. And that gives us um, 6 times 23 is 138 plus 2y equals 232. I'm just solving the equation right now. Subtract 138 on both sides. 2y equals 232 minus 138 is 94. And then when I divide by 2 on both sides to finish the solution, y will equal 50, or sorry, 47. So that tells me each bush cost 23 bucks each tree cost 47 so this is kind of like the solution to the system of equations but that is not the solution to the problem the question was not what is the cost of one tree in one bush the question was what is the cost of 10 bushes and three trees so if you stopped there and thought you were done whoops you should probably go back and reread the question to make sure your answer is answering the question because this does not. So what would be the cost of 10 bushes and three trees? If you didn't do it, maybe you want to do that now. If you did, let's go through it. So 10 bushes and three trees costs something. That's kind of what we want to figure out. But I know that each bush costs 23 bucks. We figured that out here. And each tree costs 47 bucks. So I can figure out how much this would cost altogether. This would be two. Uh, you know what? Watch this 10 times 23 plus 3 times 47. I, just, I can just type the whole darn thing in. Save myself a little bit of calculation. And we get the total cost is $371. That is my final, final answer to this question. $371. Okay, so we set up, we defined our variables, set up our system equations, and then solved using whatever method you liked. When we were done solving, we checked to make sure our answer was the answer to the question. Here it wasn't, so we had to do a little bit more work. Letter D. A theater is selling tickets for a series of rock concerts. So far, they have sold 49 balcony tickets and 66 general admission tickets for Friday's show for a total of $4,658. For Saturday's show, 51 balcony tickets and 82 general admission tickets have been sold, equaling that much money. How much more would 12 balcony tickets cost than 12 general admission tickets? Okay, so things we don't know, like our variables, defining variables. We don't know the cost of the, the balcony tickets or the general admission. So this is going to be the cost of balcony and the cost of general admission tickets. Okay, so that's my variables, and I'm going to again add another page because, well, I need to. Because I'm definitely not going to have enough space to work this problem. It's, it's, it's just not enough. Okay, so let's see. So far, I'm, I'm back here. So far, they have sold 49 balcony tickets and 66 general admission tickets and made 4,658 bucks. This first equation is all about my first day. So this is money, 49 times by the cost of the tickets gives us a money. Money plus money equals total money for that day. My second equation is for Saturday's show, 51 balcony tickets and 82 general admission tickets have been sold, totaling $5,234. That's my second um, equation. So now the question is, how much more would 12 balcony tickets cost than 12 general admission tickets? 
Well, we can only figure that out once we know what my X and my Y are. Once we know the cost of these, we can figure out how much more 12 X's would cost than 12 Y's. And so now looking at these equations, holy cow, are they ugly. I'm glad I have a calculator to do this work. And you know what? I'm going to be a filthy cheater here. Instead of solving this by hand using substitution or using elimination, I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to have to do a little bit of legwork in solving for y, but I'm going to let the calculator figure out the cost of each ticket for me. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. 49x plus 66y equals 4658. I'm going to solve that for y so that I can plug it in my calculator, graph it, and then find using that, that calculate feature, find their intersection point. So I'm going to subtract 49x on both sides. 66y equals negative 49x plus 4658. I'm going to divide by 66 on both sides. Y equals negative 49 over 66x plus, um, I'm, I don't even know if this divides right, 4658 divided by 66 is not pretty. So I'm going to leave it as a fraction. 4658 over 66. I'm going to let the calculator worry about the ugly math. Who knows, this may all backfire on me and I get answers that are terribly, terribly ugly, but I don't think so because our, our solution here is gonna be a cost. There's no way the cost is gonna be some weird, ugly number. It's gotta be a nice, pretty, like a money number. So I'm fairly confident this will work out. Okay, my second equation is 51x plus 82y equals 5, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to, I'm solving for y, so I subtract 51x on both sides. 82y equals negative 51x plus that 5, 2, 3, 4. Divide by 82, divide by 82, these cancel, and I get y equals, I'm just gonna leave everything as fractions, why not? Negative 51 over 82x plus that 5, 2, 3, 4 over 82. So I'm gonna take both of these and graph them. So let's see what happens. Starting with fractions, so I'm doing my first equation here, is negative 49 over 66x plus fraction 1, 4, 6, 5, 8 over 66. Isn't that a beautiful equation? Second equation, second or alpha y equals to get my fraction guy, negative 51 over 82 over x plus alpha y equals, yes, 5, 2, 3, 4 over 80, oops, not 88, 82. Okay, I'm double checking my equations, make sure everything looks good before I hit graph. Ba, 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 graph. And it's graphing. I can see, even though nothing's showing up here, see the little, little thinking bar, little thinking scrolly guy? So it's thinking. It's trying to graph them. And you might go and shoot. I don't see anything. Okay, well, let's zoom out. Let's go down to zoom out. Zoom out. Do we see anything yet? Do, 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 Zoom out farther. Oh, there's one line. There's the other one. All right, we're in business now. We have an intersection point right about here. So now I can see both lines. I'm going to use my calculate, the intersection number five. So you can scroll down to number five, or you can just hit number five. And it says first line, and we're on this equation right now, so that's the first one. First equation, yep. Second equation, yep. And then guess, where do we think it's crisscrossing? Honestly, we're not terribly far off. I'm just going to scooch over just a teensy bit, just so it's, it's in the ballpark. Close enough. Enter. Hey, hey, look at that. It gave me a solution of the point. 56, 29. 
So my balcony tickets, now that I know, I, I have I have numbers. Um, X is 56, Y is 29. So that's the cost of the balcony tickets, 56 bucks, and the cost of the general admission tickets were 29 bucks. Now, we can actually answer the question now. The question was, how much more would 12 balcony tickets cost than 12 general admission tickets? Well, how much more is 12 times 56 than 12 times 29? How much bigger is that? We subtract. Let's say you find a difference of something. So 12 times the 56 bucks is 672. 12 times by the $29 is 348. So the difference in those prices, 672 minus 348 is, it's a difference of $324 is the difference between 12 balcony versus 12 general admission tickets. Now, if we went and solved that bar same problem by hand without using the calculator, we should get the exact same answers. If you solved using elimination or substitution, the problem would have been, when I looked at these two equations here, I couldn't think of, I couldn't see a least common multiple right away. The least common multiple of these two definitely will be whatever you get if you take 51 times by 49. Oopsie, I did subtract. So the least common multiple of my x's is 2,499. I'm going to get huge numbers in this problem. Um, the least common multiple of 66 and 82, I don't know. I, I can go over here, math. I can go down. I don't remember where it was, but it was down here under number. Do, 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 number eight. The least common multiple of 66 and 82 is still a huge, huge, huge number. Now I could do that. I could multiply, if, if you did it this way, you could multiply this whole top equation times by 51 and multiply this whole bottom equation times by 49 and, and probably make one of them negative. That way you have a negative and a positive and then go from there. It, it will work. You'll get the exact same answer. It's just big numbers. So this was a good problem to show, again, how you can use the calculator's graph calculate trace feature to find the solution to a system of equations. Okay? So here's letter E. This is a problem for you to try. So go ahead and pause the video. If you'd like to check on your system of equations before you actually do any solving, feel free to hit play and we'll go through that part together. If not, please do the whole problem from beginning to end. All right, so let x equal and y equals. Let's define our variables. I haven't even read the problem yet. It says Eva received some gift cards for music and movie downloads for her birthday. Using one of them, she downloaded five songs and nine movies, which costs a total of 109 bucks. Using another, she purchased 13 songs and seven movies, which costs a total of $103. How much would it cost to purchase a movie that is 30% off? Okay, so the thing we don't know is we don't know the cost of a movie and the cost of a uh, music, a song. So I'm going to put X is the cost of a song. Y is the cost of a movie. By the way, if you have yours backwards of mine, if you put the movie first and the song second, we will still get the same values for those variables um like i mean if i play pretend if i got a song is two dollars and a movie is five dollars if you had your movie as the x variable you would just get five is x and two is y where i would have it reversed okay so it actually doesn't matter which one you set as which variable all that matters is that in your equations you're consistent so now the actual equation you'd have um, well, five songs and nine movies, I almost put an M, nine movies is a total of 109 bucks. 
So this is our first uh, gift card equation. F five songs, nine movies, 109 bucks. The second gift card equation would be 13 songs and seven movies, giving us a total of 103 bucks. So that's our system of equations. At this point, you may pause the video again and continue solving and see if you can finish the problem. If you already finished the whole problem, then let's keep going. So for me to solve this system of equations, I I can do this. I mean, any method. I could use substitution, elimination, graphing, calculator, whatever. I'm going to show this one using elimination. That's my preferred method. Looking at my um, variables, the least common multiple of 5 and 13 is whatever you get if you take 5 times 13. Those two numbers are relatively prime. So the least common multiple is going to be what you get when you multiply them together. And actually, the same thing is going to be true here. The least common multiple of 7 and 9 is going to be 63. So it really doesn't matter too much which one you eliminate. It's going to be about the same amount of work. So I'm going to multiply by, um, I'm going to eliminate the y's. I'm going to make both of these 63's. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation times by 9, the top equation times by 7, and I should make one of these a negative. That way I, I can get a negative 63 in here somewhere. And I'm just going to pick the top one. Okay, so I've made my decisions. Now I just got to follow through. So now this becomes negative 35x minus 63y equals negative, what, 763? That's 109 times by 7, 763. All right, good. On the bottom, we're going to have, mm, not so familiar with my 13 times tables, 117x plus 63y equals 103 times by 9, 927, good. And now when I add my equations together, my y's do eliminate, one's positive and one's negative. My x's, negative 35, come on, clear. Negative 35 plus 117 is 82x equals negative 763 plus 927, 164. And that looks like it's going to divide nicely when I divide by 82 on both sides. x equals 2. I again need more space. Boom, add page. And now I have more space. So my x value is 2. So each song does cost 2 bucks. That was just a random guess earlier, but I was right. Each song costs 2 bucks. Now we need to find the cost of each movie. So to do that, I'm going to take my x of 2 and plug it into one of my four equations and find it. Um, I'm, I'm going to use this bottom equation here because... I have space to work it right here. So 13 times by 2 plus 7y equals 103. That's 26 plus 7y equals 103. And I'm going fast, and you could pause the video or speed it up and solve it at your own pace. Or jump straight to the end and see if you got the same thing I got. 103 minus 26, 77, which gives me y equals 11. So it is 11 bucks for a movie. So the solution to the system of equations is 2 comma 11. That's that. But that's not the answer to the question because that's not what the question asked. The question asks us, how much would it cost to purchase a movie that is 30% off? So I want to purchase the, a movie that is 30% off. So if it normally costs 11 bucks, what would be the cost if you subtracted 30%? Well, 30% of 11, 30% of 11 is 0.3 times by 11 is $3.30. That's how much we would save. If it's 30% off, we would save $3.30. 
$3.30. So $11 save $3.30 gives us a cost of $7.70. We define our variables so we know what the x and the y are in all of our equations. We set up our system of equations based off the word problems. I then chose to use the elimination method and I eliminated. I found the value of each variable. A song costs two bucks, a movie costs 11 bucks. And then using that, I found how much it would cost to purchase a movie that is 30% off. I found 30% of the movie and subtracted that from the total cost or from the original price. All right, so here on letter F, it says, um, at a sale on winter clothing, Cody bought two pairs of gloves and four hats for 43 bucks. Tori bought two pairs of gloves and two hats for 30 bucks. If a new boy, Sam, bought two pairs of gloves and three hats, what would be his total cost? Okay, so it's a fairly straightforward problem. So we're going to let X equal the cost of gloves. And Y is the cost of hats. So now we have our variables defined. My equations. For Cody's situation, he bought two gloves and four hats for 43 bucks. Tori bought two gloves and two hats for 30 bucks. So now we can, well, if we solve this system of equations, we can find how much the gloves and hats cost. It says here, if a new boy Sam bought two gloves and two or and three hats, what would be his total cost? I don't know. Let's figure it out. So to solve this system of equations, I am going to multiply my bottom equation times by negative one. I'm going to make my x's eliminate. So that gives me 2x plus 4y equals 43 up top, negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 30 down below. When I solve my system of equations by adding, my x's do eliminate. I get 2y equals 13 bucks, and divide by 2, divide by 2, y equals um, 650, I think. 13 divided by 2 should be 6.5. Yeah, so $6.50. Since we're talking about money, Y, cost of a hat, is $6.50. Now, to find the cost of the gloves, all I need to do is you plug this back into one of the original equations, and we do that. So I'm going to use this bottom one right here because, well, it's already here. So 2x plus 2 times 650 is 30 bucks. 2x plus $13 is 30. 2x might, I'm going to subtract 13x on both sides. Give me 2x equals hmm, 17, I think. 30 minus 13 is 17. Should be. There we go. And then that means x equals, divide by 2 on both sides, $8.50. So gloves cost $8.50, hats cost $6.50. So if this other person, Sam, bought two gloves and three hats, two gloves and three hats gives us a total cost of, I don't know, but we can figure this out, because each glove costs $8.50 and each hat costs $6.50. I can figure out that cost. 2 times by 850 plus 3 times by 650 equals $36.50. That's how much Sam would have to pay for his two gloves and three hats. Here it says Jack has $5.45 in his pocket made up of dimes and quarters. Altogether, he has 32 coins in his pocket. How many of each coin does he have? 
Okay, go ahead and set up that system of equations and hit play, and we'll go through that part together, and then you can go on and solve. Okay, so hopefully you defined your variables first. Let x equal the number of, because we know the value of the coins. We need the number of each coin, so number of dimes. And y is the number of quarters. Okay, so there's my variables. Equations. We actually have two different pieces of information. We have the total value of the money in his pocket and how many total coins he has. So the one equation is going to be x plus y equals 32. This is the coins equation. Coins plus coins equals total coins. Dimes plus quarters equals total coins in his pocket. The other equation is the money equation. Dimes are worth 10 cents. Quarters are worth 25 cents. And the total value of money in his pocket was $5.45. Now you could use this equation, which is just fine. But actually I like another equation slightly better. I like it, instead of using uh, money like this, this is dollars, I actually like writing my equation in cents because it gets rid of my decimals. So if I rewrote the same equation in cents, a dime is worth 10 cents, a quarter is worth 25 cents, and the total cents he has would be 545 cents. Essentially, all I did is I moved the decimal over two places. Um, like in the previous lesson, to get rid of the decimal, you'd multiply by 100 here. I kind of did that. So you can use either of these two equations along with that one in your solution. So go ahead and pause the video if, if you haven't finished the problem yet and finish and solve this system of equations right now, please. All right, I am gonna be using the one where I get rid of the decimals because I don't like the decimals there. So I'm going to multiply my top equation times by negative 10. That's going to make my X's eliminate. So now that would become a negative 10x minus 10y equals negative 320. Bottom equation stays the same. 10x plus 25y equals 545. Now when I combine, or I, I, I do the elimination method, my x's will eliminate. Y's give me 15y equals, I don't know, 320 minus, oops, I meant plus 545 is 225 and I know when I divide by 15 y equals 15 double check it good so number of quarters he has 15 15 is our y value and Using my top equation in my head, or a little bit of calculation, something plus 15 is 32. Well, 32 minus 15 is 17. He has 17 dimes and 15 quarters in his pocket. That would give him a total of 32 coins and a total of $5.45 in money. That was a pretty nice, easy, straightforward problem. Letter H here says the length of Sally's garden is four meters greater than three times the width. So the perimeter of her garden is 72. Okay, I can write that. I know that. Perimeter is 72. Find the dimensions of Sally's garden. So we need something for our, our, our length and our width. Now it says the length of Sally's garden, the length is four meters greater than three times the width. So four meters greater than three times the width. It doesn't tell us how much the width is, so I'm just gonna leave it, the width is W. So there's my length and there's my width. If we wanted to, we could switch back to um, X's and Y's, but Let's see what it looks like if we don't use X's and Y's. Let's see what it looks like if we just use, um, well, in this case, W's and P's and stuff. So my two equations would be, hmm, what? Let's 
So I'm just gonna put the L back for for now because that, that is our length. So I can put that the um, length is 3w plus 4. That uses both my length and my width. So I have both variables in this equation. How does this perimeter play out? How, how would we use that in one of our equations? You know the formula for perimeter of a rectangle? Well, we know that, well, maybe, you know, perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. That's the formula for perimeter of a rectangle. And we know that the perimeter is 72, so that actually is our other equation. 72 equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So these are the two equations that we could use to solve this system of equations. Now, this is kind of set up for substitution. Do you see how this variable is already solved for us? All I have to do is plug in 3w plus 4 right there. I mean, L is this junk. Plug in this junk for L. And we're actually a good progress of the way to solving this problem. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to rearrange a little bit here. I'm going to plug this junk in right there. So let's see what we got. 72 equals 2 times 3w plus 4 plus 2w. 72 is 6w plus 8 plus 2w. 72 is 8w plus 8. That's combining like terms. I combined 6w plus 2w is 8w. I subtract 8 on both sides and 8w equals... Don't want to make a silly mistake in the middle of the problem, so I double check it. 64. And then when we divide by 8 on both sides, w equals 8. I found the width of my, of, or Sally's garden. Sally's garden is 8 meters wide. Now, in order to find the length, I can really just plug in 8 right here because it says length is 3 more than, or 4 more than 3 times the width. So if I plug in 8 right there, I'll find my length. Let's see. Hmm, that's 24 plus 4. The length of this garden is 28 meters. That's a huge garden. I mean, 8 meters by 28 meters. If each meter is about 3 feet, that's a big, big garden. But that's how, even using x's and y's, we can do this. And you might be going, but Mr. Honey, you never like defined your variables. Well, L is length and W is width. It's a little bit less important here because I, I did keep variables that kind of make sense. I didn't use X's and Y's, I used L's and W's. So I'm just kind of showing you how that could be done even without X's and Y's. Letter I, the sum of the digits of a two digit number is seven. When the digits are reversed, the difference is negative seven. Find the number. Okay, let's see if you can go from beginning to end, whole way through the problem. So to find your variables, set up your system of equations, solve the system, get your solution, let's get there. Go ahead and pause the video and do that right now. All right, so let's see here. So X and Y are going to be my two digits. So X is going to be my first digit. Y is going to be my second digit. Now you can think of this one as the one being in the tens place, and this would be the one in the ones place, if that helps you out. So the sum of the digits of a two digit number is seven. So X plus Y is seven. If you add the two numbers together of a two digit number, their sum is seven. When the digits are reversed, like that, the difference is seven. The difference, oops, sorry, is negative seven. Find the number. I want to find that original two digit number. Okay, well, let's see. Hmm. 
I'm looking at this equation or these equations. This is actually almost perfect for elimination. All I got to do is a little um, uh, trickery is not even the right word. I just got to rearrange these two. If I flip these two back, well, you see how this is a positive Y and a negative X. If I would put the negative X and the positive Y like this, because it's a negative X, my X's would eliminate and my Y's wouldn't. So all I did is just a little bit of rearranging here to make my stuff eliminate. And so let's do it. My X's do eliminate. My Y's give me two Y and I got zero. Y equals zero. If I divide by two on both sides, I get zero. So the ones digit is a zero. If I plug that in here, and I do the math, so if I plug in zero right here for y, x plus zero is seven, I know that x equals seven. So the two digit number is, well, 70. Because if I would add these two digits together, I get seven. When I reverse the digits, zero, seven, and I subtract them, I get negative seven. And finally, our last question. Now, this one is a bit of a challenge. It says a passenger jet took three hours to fly 1,800 miles in the direction of the jet stream, meaning they're going with the wind. I mean, the plane's going this way, the wind is going this way. The return trip against the jet stream means they're like, the, the wind is still blowing this way, but now they're coming into the wind, um, took four hours. What was the jet's speed in still air and the jet stream's speed? See if you can set up this system equation. Now, this is labeled as a challenge because this is fairly hard. Um, and then we'll go through it together. All right, so our variables, x and y, I'm going to use x is the plane's speed and y is the jet stream speed. Okay, so those are variables. So the wind is always pushing the same direction. So I'm going to use this. This is, well, my, my jet stream. He's blowing the same direction. But on the first trip, the plane is going in the same direction as the jet speed, as a jet stream. So the wind is kind of like helping push the plane along. So the planes actually can go faster. Their speeds are going to be added together. And this is all talking about speed. So the plane speed plus the wind speed together gave them a speed. Well, what speed? How, how fast did they go getting to their destination? Well, we know that it took them three hours to go 1,800 miles. What is that speed? Think of like miles per hour. Miles per hour. They went 1,800 miles in three hours. That is a total of 600 miles per hour. They're going in a plane. They're going fast. Now on the way back, the wind is still going the same direction. The wind is the same speed. But now the plane is going against the wind. The wind speed and the plane's speed will be subtracted from each other. And... Technically speaking, I guess the, 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 the y variable would come. Ooh. It would not go y minus x. It would be x minus y. So I'm just going to reverse this here. Um, because the, the plane is going faster than the wind, so you, you need the, the bigger number first. Um, so when you subtract their speeds, speed minus speed. Well, how fast were they going? In the end, well, it says here the return trip took four hours. So it's the same 1,800 miles, but this time it took them four hours, miles per hour. So 1,800 miles in four hours is the same as 450 miles per hour. Now look at that. 
we can do that actually relatively easily. The hard part is setting up the system of equations. Now I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging here. I'm going to put my X piece first and my Y piece second. And now this solving is very easy because my Y's will already eliminate. I get 2X equals um, I don't know, 600 plus 450, that's actually 1,050. When I divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 525 it will probably be. So we know the plane's speed is 525 miles per hour. Now, the wind's speed plug in 525 into one of your equations. I'm, I'm going to do this top one because I can do that math in my head. 525 plus something is 600. That something is 75 miles per hour. So the plane's speed plus the wind's speed is 600. And on the way back, the plane's speed minus the wind's speed was 450. And that's my solution. The plane was going 525 miles per hour. The wind speed was going 75 miles per hour. Summary. So when setting up a system of equations, what should you always do first? When you're, when you're making the system of equations from a word problem, what should you always do first? I can think of two or so good answers. First, one good answer is you should always define your variables. Make everybody aware, even yourself, what you're using for X and Y if you're using X and Y. Let everybody know what they are. And the second thing would be um, to make sure your equations all kind of fit the same theme. So like money plus money equals money. Make sure that the, the, the value of the equations add up. People plus people equals total people. Um, speed plus speed equals speed. That's very good as you're going through as well. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching this hard lesson on system of equation word problems. Until next time, toodles.